Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to... Uh, mm, sorry, I just woke up from a very long nap. <clears throat> BA select start. Game on! Are you okay? Yeah. Hey guys, we've been uh, been on our own little hiatus here for a long time. I, uh, I figured... Base. Uh, figured the shant would, uh, would go back into this, but yes, welcome... Back to B A select start base. There it is. Now I finally recognize what we're doing. <laughs> uh, hopefully everybody had a happy new year. Um, hopefully the holidays treated you well, depending on whatever you celebrate. Hope everybody had a safe holiday season, had a happy new year. Yes, it's been a, a while since we've done an episode. Just the circumstance and time and schedule just hasn't been able to align up. But finally, we're here and we're back. First episode of 2020. 2020. Uh, it's, it's going by so fast. Like, it's already the middle of January. Um, but, you know... S speaking of the holiday, you picked up something uh, right around that time frame that uh, coincides with 2020. Um, what would that be, the shunt? That would be a waste of 40 bucks. Ouch! That stings. Hey, do you get it? Uh, uh, is he even in the game? I don't know. Not remember. his new model. <laughs> it's just old sting? Old sting. It's been a minute since I actually played. Me too. <laughs> it's, the game is actually has been removed from my console. Oh, dear. Um, but yes, I picked up... Uh, okay, so let me just introduce the structure here. We're going to give uh, 2K20 a salute. Um, as in goodbye, not a hello. WWE, WWE, 2K20. Uh, we are giving you a salute, as in a goodbye, because, um, yeah. Um, we're gonna give it a salute, and, uh, we're gonna just sweep it under the rug, which put is it, where it belongs. Put it in a bottle. Yeah. Chuck it out to sea. Um, and we're going to uh, introduce uh, another, um, uh, can we call it a series at this point? Yeah, why not? Uh, introduce a, a new uh, game, which is now becoming a series, um, which we've been actually talking about here and there on certain parts of the episode, but we never really got into it. But there's something coming up in just a few months that ties into that, which is why we feel like this is about, about time. <clears throat> It's about time. <laughs> it's clobbering time. I think you can actually hear it ticking. We'll see. Oh, we'll oh, see. oh, is that why I'm like? <laughs> That's what I was doing. Oh, okay. I'm like <laughs> the people can't see what you're doing. Hey, if you can't hear it, just find a, t a ticking sound effect and throw it on there. It'll can be fine. they hear it? No. Oh. Um, I was doing the John Cena. You can't see me thing next to my ear. Ah, well, I, I don't think they could see that. Hey, do you get it? <laughs> Um, anyway, let, let's, let's do jump this. into let's it. Let's jump in. So I was talking about talking around a lot of details for a long time in to avoid spoilers. To avoid spoilers for the Shant who had not touched the game as of yet. He has now, um, regretfully, to, to my understanding, touched on just about everything in the game that we've addressed previously, or so, everything that worked. <laughs> fair enough. Um, so. Before we jump into your, your review, obviously, one major issue that recently cropped up with the game is... Um, Why 2 2 k Well, yeah. The, the year that the game was based on literally broke the game. As soon as the clock turned midnight. Is this Inception? Yes. Okay. Um, incepting the game into <laughs> the trash because uh, as soon as the clock hit midnight... <laughs> The game shut down. It broke. It broke. You could not do it unless you rolled your, your console time back, which, from my understanding, you could only do on PlayStation. And PC. And PC, but not on Xbox. So, so if you're an Xbox gamer... Rip. Out of luck. So, with that said, um, I think they, have they fixed it? Do you know? I, I haven't even tried. We don't know. It might be fixed. I feel like I heard it was fixed, but... The irony of this statement, I haven't played 2K20 in 2020. Same. Seriously, I haven't played 2K20 in 2020. <laughs> I'm serious. So anyway, let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. What are your What are your opinions now that you've you've played it? Okay. Talk yeah. about the good. Talk about the bad. Okay. If we can be serious for a minute, 
Um, first of all, I highly enjoyed career mode. Yeah. Despite what everybody says, I enjoyed career mode. A little glitchy, but the story's fun. Yes. A little glitchy. Um, Trey was the airhead of the story. Um, Red was, I think, the more likable, relatable character, especially with the mean streak, how it would take yeah. over sometimes. Um, it was very fun. I just felt like the ending was a little anticlimactic. Yeah. Because for those of you who have played... And, and didn't make any sense that if they lost the match, then Brooklyn and Samoa Joe take their place in, in the, the Hall, Hall of Fame. fame. And I all... did like Bionic Arm Joe, though. It was weird. It was kind of weird. But I liked it. I think as of 2K19, they've been really like trying to be creative, sort yeah. of putting like fictional sci-fi stuff into the game. Oh, like, like I don't know if you were, were, were aware of it, but the second DLC, DLC. was... was the was Mad, Max Mad Max type, type of thing. Which yeah. I had not finished everything on. I think I may have unlocked the Rhea Ripley character. There but... was a Rhea Ripley character? Yeah, oh. I think. Or it was her outfit. Either way. Uh, but that's the second one, and God knows if we're ever going to see the rest of them. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so um, that's something I want to ask. The thing that, I don't know if you remember this, I, I was talking about how it gives you the option to make different choices this, in yeah. certain moments. Did you take the trophy to the ring with you, or I not? did. Okay. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I knew what was going to happen. I'm like, it's it's going to get wrecked. I know. Well, and that's why she ends up with the eye patch. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I d I don't know what happens if you don't take it to the ring, though. We should go back and replay it. Oh wait, we can't because it's two and twenty. I did. I did make a second set of superstars. So if the game is fixed, maybe I'll play. Maybe I'll play again. Okay. But uh, I not just right now. maybe you can attest or you can maybe concur with something. Brooklyn Von Braun, they did a good job of making her the antagonist. Yeah. Like, she was a complete unpleasant person. Yeah, and it was outside of kayfabe. Because yes. they, they made her consistently a bad person re within the plot regardless. Like, yes. she wasn't just a wrestling bad guy. She was a life bad guy, which is why I, I, I thought she was a compelling character. She had a weird abdomen. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but her abs cut in a weird way to where I, she would come out and there was like a dark shadow on her stomach. Okay, I think I might have... Weird character yeah. thing, but... Um, I just felt like 95% of the time you were being put down and mm -hmm. she would get the better of you. And then you beat her one time and then again, you get like this really anticlimactic yeah. ending. It's like, oh, that's it? Yeah, because you go very quickly from the Divas Championship storyline to yeah. the Hall of Fame. Thing. Right, yeah. And the whole time I'm like, oh, she's going to get her. She's going to get her. Somehow she's going to get her. And hers. you kind of yeah. do, but not really. What was up with the Hall of Fame and then Becky and Rhea come out in their dresses and try to beat you up? What was the so point of that? It's, it's going back to previous moments in the storyline. Um, oh, like all Be when Becky has her her, her faction yeah. of all the guys, and yeah. Rhea, when you're coming up through NXT, you yeah. fight her. So they're all trying I think you to beat her for the NXT title in the storyline. Yeah, story yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just br drudging up old, old history. Nah. It was it was weird. Nah. Um, it, especially like I didn't wander close to Joe, but like, what's Joe do if you get too close? Because it tells you not to not get, to get close too close. To him. Yeah. So I don't know what happens unless he like just snaps Trey's neck and it, the game suddenly goes from being rated T to being rated M. M. <laughs> uh, Seventeen or older, please. Um, no, but yeah, all in all, career mode I thought was it was fun. It, it was uh, it was really enjoyable, and it's true what they said. It like it, it took a good few hours to complete. Yeah. Um. So that was fun. Um, outside of that, I gotta be honest, everything else, here's the thing, I feel like it's missing something, and I, but I, I can't put my finger on it, that like, cause I kept on going, like, I'm like, just give it one more chance, you'll, you'll get used to it, just give it one more chance, the controller scheme is really unpleasant, like, to do a comeback, you have to press five buttons, you have to press, you press the triangle to start, well, now it's two buttons. So let's say oh, if you're, yeah. if you're X, on the ground, X you have square? to press it to initiate it where your character does the kip up. Oh. Then you press it one more time to do it. Yeah. And then you have to press all the buttons oh, I, to... I never did the kip up thing. Yeah. I just waited till I was standing. <laughs> well, either way, you got to press it twice. No. 
You you press not it if once. You, not if you do it the way I was doing it. How are you, you doing? You just it? do it. You just do it like you're doing a finisher, but then it starts the button sequence, which was the same way the comeback thing went the last year too. But you gotta press it twice. You press it once, and the bar starts where you have oh. a limited amount of time to do it. Then you press it oh, one more okay. time to initiate. I it. thought that was the same though. I thought that was the same as it was last no, year. No, it's two buttons. Comeback is two buttons this year. I don't know. Uh, okay, go on though. Um, so, so yeah, and I'm going to be honest, you know, Dan, out of anybody, I kept on saying, oh yeah, I can't wait to buy Hulk Hogan and play him. I got the SmackDown, um, uh, pack for $9.99. I played like once or twice and the game, it's missing a lot. It just feels really incomplete. And the whole time I'm like, just give it a chance. You'll get used to it. You'll like it. And I just, I couldn't. Yeah. And I came to a point where I stopped playing. To, um, I removed it from my console and I actually went back to playing 2K19. Yeah. And and that's, to, uh, that's almost to be expected based on the fact that from day one we've been talking about how this is probably going to be a, build, a, a rebuilding year for them anyway. Or it's just going to be putting the, the final nail in the coffin, as it almost sounds like. Apparently, 2K21 is already in trouble because yeah. from what I've been hearing, all the reports, and I, I don't remember what the last details were that we discussed, but 2K21, apparently people are quitting 2K. There's been a cut in the budget. Yeah. So apparently, 2K21 is already in trouble. And I don't yeah. even think they started like doing any work on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and and I think I'd said previously that odds are I would probably pass on 21 unless something just blows it out of the water. Catas- <laughs> Catastrophic is not the right word, but something of cataclysmic proportions occurs Happens, that yeah. suddenly makes you go, oh my God, the game's amazing now. Yeah. Which I'm not holding my Yeah, I'm not either. Um, but no, I think WWE definitely would be better off with Without... partnering with somebody else. Yes. Um, or taking Yokes. 21 off. Take 21 off. Yokes. Uh, so, uh, side note, um, <coughs> Xavier and Tyler Breeze about to start Battle of the Brands again. I saw that, yeah. Um, which brings back the idea of general manager mode. Why don't we just go back to the SmackDown versus Raw type of games? Dan. Why? Why? Are we still... Go back to the older formula, like updated graphics. You can like, hell, you can keep, of you can keep the more updated. No, don't. Not well, don't. I don't mean twenty two K twenty. I mean the style because it was much more rudimentary back in the day. Yeah. So the more advanced, like press off to the side, hit a button, da, da, yeah, all yeah. of that, you can keep <laughs> a more advanced game system than it was. But just take those and roll back the concept. Because those are the ones that people look at fondly. Ironically, I did a um, video where I took 2K14 and I said, if you want to fix the game for 2K21, if there is a 2K21, copy 2K14, paste it onto the new gen, and just make tweaks. I guarantee you, if you do that, people will buy the game again. And put general manager mode in it. Yeah. GM mode, hashtag. Hashtag GM mode. Hashtag push Cesaro. Anywho, so, um, um, did you play any of the, did you buy any of the download, the DLC? No, I did not. I played a showcase mode. I, I got four matches into that and I stopped. Um. Did you finish it? I finished. What was the last, I think my last one was Natty and Charlotte. That's the first match. That's not right, is it? Maybe I only did the first match then, I don't remember. That's the first match. Uh, I feel like I got a, a a couple in at least, but I the it, last match it is... felt bland, and I I've voiced my opinion on the showcase thing yeah. before. I have too. Please stop. We don't want to replay stuff that happened this year, a year ago. Well, and even that, like, here's my thing. Here's my thing. I don't like that it gives you milestones within a match that you have to accomplish specific things. Now, the reason for that. Is going back again to 2K19, where I I still have not beaten the Randy Orton Daniel Bryan match. There's very specific things you yeah. have to get him into a specific red limbs, and then you got to put him in a submission hold, and then you got to put him through a table. And if it takes too long to do any of those things, suddenly your health is down, and then all it takes is one RKO that he saves up, and then you lose. Much or you like can in real lose. life. 
And I would rather that, like, base, if you're going to do those things, if you're going to do those little mini cutscenes, base it off the damage I perform to him. Don't give me specific stuff that I have to do. Have it be, uh, get him to yellow health or get his arm. Like, I'm fine with, like, get his arms to yellow and then one of the cutscenes starts. Yeah. Get his body to, to yellow. Get his head to, to red. Okay. All of those are fine, but even, um, did you run into the issue that we talked about with the Velveteen Dream Match in career mode? Yes, and because you told me about it, I believe I changed one of my abilities to Move Thief. So I kind of had, I, I cheated because I knew from Dan and he told me, so I changed it and I was like, oh yeah, that match is coming up, change. Yes. But that's what I'm talking about is like putting specific conditions where you have to do a thing in order to complete a thing. Yeah. Um, it's annoying. Yes. I don't want to deal with that shit. Well, then uh, do not play the last match, the WrestleMania match where Becky wins because that was brutal. There is Ugh. like 25 mini things that you have to do. That sounds Ram so and so into the stairs, grab a table, lean it up, give her a disarmor, give her a manhandle slam. I'm so I did it all in one try and I'm surprised. I have yeah. no idea how I did it. I anyway, moving forward. It's, it's not special. Like it was more of a chore than anything. I think yeah. I said that before. And we don't play these things. F- I didn't to even do play chores. the Roman Reigns uh tower. Literally <laughs> first match in, fifteen seconds in, I was like, Okay, quit. Go back to exhibition. Yeah. I don't even play. I don't think exhibition mode was terrible, but you it wasn't. But you don't want to. You don't want to play by yourself all the time. That's boring. Well, that's fine. It's just that button scheme pissed with me so bad. It pissed I just, with you. I, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> but no. no, um, my career was fine, and like we yeah, talk, my career was fun. Um, like like I had said previously on one of the episodes, like if you can do, like if you did a different story for each pairing. Like, Red. Red's your main character, right? Yes. Okay. So there's four different character types that Red can be. Yeah. If there's a different story for each of those four types, that gives the game more, Replay more value. replayability. Yep. And that, it's an easy enough thing, because then you only have to build four stories. doesn't matter what the hell Trey is. You could do Gladiator, and, and you could do Gladiator and Gladiator, and Titan and Gladiator, and Trey doesn't matter. Yeah. And you still have that replayability. Yeah. Um... So I think that's something that the next rendition, wherever it is, whoever it is, something that they should consider is taking it back to No Mercy. Because that's that's one of the the best things about that game. Branching. Is the fact that you could go off in different things. Um, but yeah, I mean, so if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. There's plenty of things that were not broken that we can... If you can take branching story... And GM mode, and create a story mode. Create a story mode, and put all of those into one game. You're already at a good good place. And all that is available in one game, ladies and gentlemen. You can buy 2K14 on Xbox 360 or PS3, maybe about thirteen, fourteen dollars used, or you can buy the new one. But that's probably going to be expensive, but it's worth it. So buy it, enjoy it, moving forward. Check out your local GameStop. Uh, four or five years ago, maybe. Though. Um, uh, <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I I have stopped. I have stopped playing. I mean, I just uh, here's the thing. Um, there was a patch update that came out right before 2020 hit, where they actually fixed a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it, it like I looked at it. I'm like, we should be happy, but you're kind of you're where you were supposed to be when the game release released. <laughs> um. Yeah, and it seems like 2K, like, they don't really show a whole lot of concern. It seems like they're just like, nah, yeah, patch coming your way sometime soon. Maybe <laughs> don't, never. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get you <laughs> eventually. Oh, boy. Well, on that note, I mean, is there really much more you want to you wanna say about this one? I mean, I have that. There's there, there's one thing I did. Because I know say. you you haven't gotten a ton of time to talk about your actual experience. Well, so far, I did a separate solo review. Yeah, so if you want, you can go check that out. I give a, a whole lot of uh, in depth review about that. The one thing that I will say though, 
is that every year when a new 2K game would come out, you would hear the same thing. Oh, don't buy it, just just, just play the previous one. So let's say if I had 2K17 and 2K18 came out, they would go, just stick to 2K17. 2K18, eh, it's whatever. And then when 2K19 would come out, oh, just stick to 2K18, do not play 2K19. Um, seriously, though, this time around, when they tell you just stick to 2K19... <laughs> listen. Yeah, listen. I mean, here's the thing. I'm actually glad that I found out for myself because at the end of the day, I'm a wrestling fan. So, like, I need to find out for myself despite what everybody else says. But um, I just... And, I mean, keep in mind, I bought it at Black Friday. Like, I didn't even pay full price. And I still feel bitter about it. <laughs> I can always trade it in, but... It's already money spent. <coughs> so, yeah. I mean, any last thoughts about 2K20? No, not really. Now, if we get this unanimous, this big patch update where they say everything is fixed, maybe I'll reinstall it and hop back in and see what see what's going on. But until then, it's fair to say that both you and I have, to some extent, closed the book on 2K20. I don't see things looking up for 2K21. So right now, as of this point, sorry, WWE 2K, but we're moving on. It's time to go. Enough's enough. It's, it's time, time for, for a change. change. Um, I but, forget we were in a text conversation. You you said something and I and I popped that quote on you. I think you were talking about your job. Probably. Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, sorry, that got a little too personal there. Yeah, it happens. It does. Um, post uh post production. But you know something that I'm confident we're not gonna get couple months down the line on and go man I what, got screwed what trash <laughs> that would be the last of us part two specifically yes yes so for those of you who have been uh, our our listeners and our viewers <laughs> all on five this, of you um, you know that I frequently would reference this regardless <laughs> of the fact that we were talking about the wrestling game um but, you know, BA Select Start, while name-wise, name, name wise, is sort of a riff on Up, Up, Down, Down, which is Z Xavier Woods of WWE's uh, streaming show uh, or YouTube channel. Um, this is a video game podcast, so we're not going to just talk about wrestling games. Right. Um, just like they don't just do like they they barely do wrestling games on there it's yeah. just wrestlers if it wasn't for the jam mode i feel like wrestling games are almost almost non-existent yeah, almost. they do mostly things like mortal Kombat or retro games right yeah um but we'll get there eventually maybe uh but for now let's talk about last of us a game that has uh has stuck very deeply in both of our hearts um shot yes I throw this question to you. Are you taking a survey? Hey, yo. <coughs> tell me, Sean. Um, I'll tell you. What, uh, what, what brought you to the table? What brought you to The Last of Us Part 1? Part 1. Well, um, ironically, uh, one day I went to my uh, buddy's house, uh, which whom you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, ironically, we were playing 2K14. Um, so we played and then we got burnt out and then he's like, hey man, you want to try The Last of Us? Now at this point, I had seen the commercial a few times when I was watching Raw and I and it, let me just tell everybody, I don't like sci-fi, I don't like fictional stuff, I don't like post-apocalyptic games, but as they say in life, there are always exceptions. Mm -hmm. I start playing and I was just hooked. It just, it got me to the point where I told him, I said, can I borrow this? And he's like, sure, go ahead. And I already beat it eight times. And I'm like, you beat this game eight times? Now, keep in mind, it had only been about less than a year since it yeah. came out. I'm like, you beat this game eight times? He's like, yeah, dude, it's that good. I'm like, no way. Mm -mm. Now, keep in mind, I was way past the days where I would sit in front of a console for 10 hours. And it finally happened. I literally sat with on my PS3 playing this game for about 10 hours. I, I played from the beginning all the way to when uh, you fall down the elevator and yeah. you fall in the water and then you have to find your way up to Ellie. Um, but I was just hooked. I was mesmerized. And it, it was just awesome. You know, Again, a guy who doesn't do sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, fictional games, 
this game just got me yeah. and i was i would play it again and again and again to finally where i got it on both the ps3 and the ps4 yeah that's what brought me to the dance so dan i pose the question back to you what got you into last of us all right so fun fact about me yes i skipped the ps3 i'm a sony i'm a sony guy for the most part i i uh, was turned on to the playstation <laughs> one originally the Legend of Dragoon is one of my favorite vi uh, video games of all time as well. It's a four-disc video game. Oh, PlayStation that's the one. one that you would tell me about. Uh, went to PlayStation 2, where we had all the SmackDown games. And Grand Theft Auto. Never played it on PS2. But uh, then they rolled out the PS3. Yes. And the big selling point of it, initially, was it's got a Blu-ray player. And right, I, yeah. And I went, I don't need that. <laughs> And there weren't very many games that were sticking out to me at the time. Um, as it turns out, a lot of those big games, the ones that I missed out on, have now been carried over to the PS4 via remasters and that sort yes, of stuff. Yes, yes. So I didn't miss a, miss a damn thing, Sony. Thank, ha! Thank you. In your face. But so I did. A, I did Xbox 360, and then I came Shame. back. And then okay. I came back. He came to back. He came back. PS4. Yes. Because at that point, then I owned a couple of Blu-rays. Blu um, <laughs> so it was the Blu-ray that got you, that got brought you back. That's what got me. <laughs> so I um, didn't know. I didn't know about the, the Last of Us because I had skipped that console, and it wasn't until ye uh, uh, what what year that did it come out? Twenty thirteen. So twenty thirteen. I don't think I picked it up until twenty sixteen. I don't. Interesting. I don't think so. Okay. Because then I had heard good things. I, I, I kept seeing it at work, and I, I would go, oh, well, I've heard good things about this one. But it was 50 bucks, and I was like, eh, I don't know if I know enough about it to right. spend that yeah. much money. And then I think it went on sale for for Black Friday or something, and so I, I picked it up for like $20. Was this PS3 or PS4? PS4. PS4. I still don't know okay. PS3. Okay. Uh, oh, that's right, yeah. But so I'm I, not paying attention, obviously. But so I bought the remaster right. and tried it. Now, rolling back on Xbox, um, I think they technically had it on PlayStation also, but uh, Dead Island is another video game. I am the opposite of you. I do like post-apocalyptic i like sci-fi i'm a big star wars fan um and i like battlefront i'll throw that in there and, and dead island uh i i don't think i've really i don't think i've talked about this too much on I here i might have referenced have, no. it at one point they did a couple of dead island games and i love those two because and i'm not good at first person shooter games let me be clear about that um you i think you can do third third person like the last of us on it but I was always in first person. Okay. Um, and I would always have melee weapons, like swords and yeah. things, because I'm bad at the guns. <laughs> but so Dead Island is another zombie game where you're on an island, and it's sort of like Coachella on an island, where everybody is, like, doing drugs, and <laughs> uh, you get to choose from one of four different characters, and one's a rapper, one's a f uh, retired football player, one is, like, a former military. It, it, there's a, a several characters. Dynamic characters. Yeah. But what I loved about that game was the atmosphere, because on on Dead Island, you're on this island, and the soundtrack doesn't really play unless you're about to be in a fight. Oh, it's one of so those. So you're just walking around this, this deserted island with... Right. And you hear zombies off to the side, but there's no music. You're just hearing the ambient noise of the zombies and people screaming in the distance, and you're just exploring, and you're gathering stuff. It's a... It's a awkwardly a little bit like Minecraft in that regard because you're looking for nails and you're looking for electro wire that then you can craft into the Survival electrified, stuff. The electrified yeah. sword and, but it was a really fun game to play um, and so I, I that was my first real exposure to like the zombie genre right. and so then in 2016 or whenever when I picked up The Last of Us having heard so many good things um, and I'd been, I think I'd seen it because I, I always thought, oh, she looks, she looks like Ellen Page. Right. <laughs> um, in the, in the original incarnation. Yeah. They, they, they tweaked her. it. Yeah. But, um, I finally picked it up and I, I pop it in and from the minute that game starts, you're, you're engaged because... Yes. They start real strong because you've got Sarah and she's sleeping on the couch and then uh, she, she, Joel shows up and they do the birthday thing and then right. she's, in, she's in bed. She wakes up. She goes downstairs and you have the zombie come 
bursting through the through yeah. the door and it's just it's on. Yeah. And then you get in the car and you go and you have the big emotional intro. Which which was spoiled for me because I think I had already seen it in the YouTube clip. So when yeah. that happened, it didn't hit me because I had already seen it, but continue. But yeah, so you, you have that big emotional moment right before the opening credits and then you're into and the you're into in the story. The post apocalyptic setting. Yeah. And so if that beginning tutorial for all intents and purposes right, yeah. doesn't catch you, you're dead on the inside. Because that game is amazing. Yes. The again, the di the, the the well not dynamic, but the, the environmentals, the uh the gameplay in general, because it's made by Naughty Dog, who made yeah. the Nathan, Nathan Drake games, and there's yes. certain elements of that that they carried in. That they yep. carried in, mm -hmm. and even those, like I, I, I just recently bought the Nathan Drake collection, which is the one, two, and Did three. You? Okay, but I played four. Like I bought right. four yeah. when it came out, right. and it's a, it's a great. Like those are great games too. The adventure, the adventure theme, and then the gameplay is solid. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. You you're, you said you like Battlefront, but you, I'm assuming you haven't played the Jedi Fallen Order game either. I haven't. No. Also made by EA, I believe. Yeah. But okay. it also plays very similarly to those games. So just that, I think that's a genre that I I enjoy. Um, but yeah, and you've got the the dynamic between Ellie and Joel. Joel. Which is surrogate, the surrogate father, but also this headstrong little girl who doesn't have anything, doesn't have anybody. Left. Left. Uh, literally the last of them. Yeah. And, uh, no, it just plays really well, and you've even got the emotions with Tess and the ending of the game. Now, we need to talk about this, because for a long... I don't know if we've ever talked about this in depth but a lot of people go back to this they say last of us is a great game but that ending i've heard some people say why couldn't we choose you know whether we decide to lie to ellie or tell her the truth and um neil Druckmann, the creator said we wanted a game that just delivers it and it's not like Grand Theft Auto, the last mission, you have three different options. Yeah. You can be the bad guy and kill the two people whom you get to know, or you choose option C, where you team up with those guys and you kill the bad guy. Sorry if I spoiled it for you guys. <laughs> but you get to choose. Yeah. In Last of Us, you don't get to choose. It just it plays out. Yeah. So I want to ask you, spoilers coming for those of you who haven't played it, so you might want to click off the video. Obviously, Joel lies to Ellie. Yeah. I want to ask you, do you feel like Joel, do you agree with what he did? Or to you, is it like, no, you you lied to Ellie, she gained your trust, you lied to her, it's not fair. So my opinion on this is, I interpreted it as Ellie knows that she was lied to. Pe she is She is fully aware that he lied. Some... But, she, but because she trusts him... Uh, she begrudgingly forgives him for this decision because he was looking out for her, for her. and because she he's the only thing that she has left in the world she she probably deep down didn't really want to lose that either yeah but that's my opinion what were you going to say? I'm um, just going to say that a lot of people would throw it out there, and this is their verbiage, that Ellie has a very good bullshit um, detector. Yeah. Because throughout the story, there are certain points where she picks it out, and, you know, she catches Joel trying to, like, um, you know... Pull, uh, pull over, pull, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my opinion is I agree with what, what Joel did. Yeah. Because... I, again, I, I wish this was from me, but someone else on a YouTube comment had said this one time where... The world took something away from Joel. Yeah. You know, his daughter, Tess, everyone that he's come to love, the world has taken away. Yeah. So this time around, Joel took something away from the world, yeah. the cure for mankind. Yeah. But all in the vein of, at the end, like, you feel like, you know, Ellie is like a daughter figure for Joel. Yeah. Um, even though there's that one scene where he goes, you're right. You're not my daughter, yeah. and I'm not your dad. Yeah. I I feel like shortly afterwards, where he's like, "Ellie, get on the horse. We're going to the university to get the test done." I feel like that was his way of, okay, it's not like that, you know. Let's let's do this, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people go back and forth on the ending, but I personally, 
I think I thought it was a, a perfect ending. I I it's bitter it's just bittersweet enough because <laughs> yes, humanity is humanity's hung out to dry. Yeah. But you care about these people. You care about Ellie, you care about Joel. You want them to find peace and be happy by the end of that game. Yes. And so I don't have a problem with it. And I think I, I think with part two we'll get a payoff to that whole thing. We'll see what that lie led to. Yeah. Um But I, I also I trust Druckmann and I trust Naughty Dog to pay off the end of this one too. I I have I have full faith in them. That which is something we can't say about two K twenty. <laughs> I have full faith in them that when you get to the conclusion of part two, you're also gonna have this divide between people where you have some people who are like, No, that that's the ending and others yeah. are gonna be like, Why? No offense to the why people, but you're wrong. Um and may, like I'll and I'll eat my words if 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 it comes out and I play through and I go nah that was a bad that's not a good ending, <laughs> uh, but I I I trust that they'll do the best ending to suit the story. Million dollar question: Will we see a Last of Us Part Three? I don't think so. No, you think it's I th- done? I think we stop after we two stop because um, I I feel like I heard I feel like I'd heard in an interview before where they were already kind of not plan they weren't planning to do a part two. Um, they left it open where they could, but I, the the plan wasn't to do one yeah. from my recollection. Um, but no, I think they're gonna put a nice little bow on these characters to where we don't need a third one. Okay. Um, could we maybe see a? Uncharted, where possibly Ellie is taken out of Last of Us, and we see her in a different franchise, kind of like how Uncharted at first it was Nathan Drake, and then it became Chloe. You know, Uncharted Lost Legacy, where it yeah. was still Uncharted, but it was someone else taking over the series. I, I don't want to, because here's my here's my my thing. I didn't play Lost Legacy. I saw the teaser for it, and I went, mm, "This isn't Uncharted." And I think that that's the same thing you would run into if you tried to take the Last of Us name and slap it on something else. Well, not the name, but just take a character and put them in another J- saga. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not crazy about it because I I feel like you sh- I feel like you're better off keeping things contained. Okay. Um. Now going back to the ending of the first one, uh, as a fun little th- Easter egg thing. It's not an Easter egg. But if you've played The Last of Us and you have not looked this up, uh, you can find a video online um, where the cast and it's like they should, it's all of them in this video. I think just in the mocap suits, where they improvised the uh, alternate ending. The, the, al- the alternate ending. Yeah. Look up the alternate <laughs> ending and just enjoy it. It's weird, but it's fun. I just and wish... you got the cast singing. Uh, I just I heard that they started animating it. Yeah. But I think they never uh, finished it. But it would have been awesome if they fully <laughs> animated that full thing, just like an extra, you know, thing to throw at the Maybe audience. Maybe it'll be a bonus content on last. Possibly, of possibly. Um, but with that, I mean, do you have any other remarks? Okay, that's what I wanted to ask you too. Sorry, we're gonna be doing a lot of backstory here before we actually get into Last of Us Two. Um, how many times have you played Last of Us? Uh, all the way through. I think technically, I've I think technically I've only played all the way through once. Once, okay. Maybe twice. Okay. I'm in the. I'm somewhere in the middle of another of another playthrough. I think was that the last time when we were doing the co-sharing? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, where you were jumping in and, and, and watching, and then a, uh, there was one point where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I think is what happened, <laughs> and so I threw it to you. Yeah. Um. Is there a moment, a chapter, a scene that you feel like just stuck with you during your first or second Um, gameplay? Other than the ending, because I know the ending is like, oh, it's the ending of the game, sure. But was there anything that stuck out to you? While you ponder your answer, I'm going to give you mine. Okay. There is actually a cutscene to me that encompasses a lot. So you recall uh, the winter scene, yeah, where um, you know there's like this uh, there's this 
scuffle, this melee, this fight between David and Ellie. Yes. And we cut to that cutscene where she grabs the machete or the knife or whatever it is. There is multiple things in that cutscene, in the cutscene itself. First of all, the music, how there's this this beautiful symphony that's playing while a brutal um a brutal attack is going yeah. on essentially um and the funny thing is a lot of people have said you know the whole time you're waiting for Joel you're waiting for him to come save the day but it's Ellie who winds up fending for herself and actually overcoming yeah. and the one part that just would grab me is for the first time first and only time where Joel calls Ellie baby girl yeah which is there's only been one person in the world that he's ever said that to that we know of that's yeah. sarah yeah the second he calls her baby girl you still you see their lips moving they're talking but there's no more dialogue yeah. they they walk out and they they pan all the way down to the machete that's still in david's skull but you don't see it and again it goes back to it's not what you see it's what you don't see that cut scene to me is just it's everything yeah. it's violent it's it's a relief it's beautiful it's sick and twisted all at the same time that moment to me is where i feel like joel a hundred percent looks at ellie as his own daughter when he says baby girl because yeah. he goes he tried to and they insinuate rape and he and he hugs her he goes oh baby girl you know like that moment to me just stuck out what's 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 yours before you started talking, that that's actually the one that, that I landed on too was the the machete yeah. scene, um, and it it sticks out to me because of the fact that it's it's quite literally uh, the 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 death of innocence. Like she again, you're you 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 drew up the fact that you're waiting for Joel to show up. She doesn't need Joel. She doesn't need Joel. In that moment. In that moment. Um, and it becomes abundantly clear. Now, then she has the breakdown where she chops him up and then she, she breaks. Down. breaks. Yep. And it's this very, very, this very intimate, um, heart-wrenching moment because you've just played through her entire experience. She, uh, she gets locked up in the cage. Uh, she sees the guy get chopped up to be eaten. Yep. Uh, she's like, I'm next. I'm the next one. And then she breaks out and she escapes to the, to the, to the restaurant. I think it's a restaurant. Yeah. Where all of that transpires. And David's a monster. He's a horrendous person. But I will tell you this. They do. It goes back to show you Ellie's bullshit detector. Cause David comes off as I'm David. I can help you out. I can provide you shelter with food. And the whole time Ellie doesn't give him any of it yeah at all but yeah, go ahead. she throws it back at him um but yeah and then you have that big culmination that big moment of culmination and the the it, it like the the fact that she doesn't need Joel but that she wants Joel around is highlighted by um not just that whole chunk of the game uh, because you have in the sp- no in the fall in the fall, he falls off the horse uh, after getting impaled, and it goes dark, and then we come up on the rabbit. Yeah. Um, you have that, and then you have the thing from uh, Left Behind. Left Behind, where they cross-cut yeah, where what was happening. Where it's all of that. She went out of her way to make sure he was safe, to take care of him, to uh, nurse him back to health. She could have. She could have just left him. She could have been like, "Oh, f- he's gonna die. I, I, I gotta take care of myself. I gotta get myself to the firefly." She could have abandoned Joel. Yeah. She didn't. Um, because in her own in her own way, uh, she she loved and cared about him the same way he, he was, loved he was yep. loving and caring about her, and it became this um, this yeah this father daughter type of dynamic. Um, it, it's like a. It's not exclusively father daughter though. That's the thing, because there's also just sort of a, a general friendship to yes. the whole thing. Yeah. Because they're very bantery, and she's like, if they were father daughter, she would get in so much trouble for the way she talks, <laughs> talks to Joel. Talks, yeah. But no, it's also the fact that they just have that rapport, that respect for one another. Yeah. And 
and again, going going to the to the ultimate end of the story, the reason that she, uh, my perception is the reason she accepts the lie despite knowing that it's a lie, is because she knows that it was done out of love. Yes. And then you have in the 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 trailer for the new one the reference of oh your old man, which I think we're supposed to take as Joel. Joel. Um, I guess it, uh, we may find out that it's Tommy, but we'll 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 see, we'll see. Um, because there's a lot of gray area going into this one because it's been five years. Yeah, we don't have a definitive um, exposure to Joel yet. We got the one the one scene where he show where it's I don't even remember the line he says, but it's uh, that like actual. You honest thought face I thing. you thought I would let you do this on your own. Yeah. And I'm still not entirely convinced that he's actually there for this one. So. Let's talk about this. Because this <laughs> is a bag of worms that I've been trying to open up and I've been meaning to talk to you Big about. old bag of worms. Yes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Can of worms. Um, a lot of people are speculating. Going back to the teaser trailer that we got. The where very Ellie's first singing. one where yep. she's singing, uh, sh- sh- uh, geez, what's it called? You're gonna have to tell me. I don't know. Because uh, there's a there's a it's it's a cover. It's of a cover. An yeah, song. yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I want to say it's just uh, val- val- I don't know. <laughs> Go on. I'll, but, I'll say the title here. Okay. Um, but going back all the way to that teaser trailer, a lot of people, as they usually do, start speculating. You know, people start looking at small little through the valley. Through the valley. It's yep. Just, there it is. Through the valley. Go on. Uh, a lot of people started speculating that, hey, you know what? There is enough of a gray area here where Joel maybe has been dead or died or something happened in the five years that we haven't seen these characters. A lot can happen in five years. And in five minutes. <laughs> um, Did somebody just, say five minutes? Yeah, and no, seriously, a lot can happen in five minutes. Just play 2K20 and you'll see what we're talking about. <clears throat> but... I want to get your take on this. Do you think from everything that you've seen from the teaser trailer to the launch trailer to the gameplay that we got a few months back from all of that, in your <laughs> personal opinion, until we play the game, of course, do you think that Joel is dead or alive? I think that... We will probably find out that in the core of the story, Joel is dead. Okay. Now, I think we will have sort of that time jump thing happen a couple of times where we see... It's not going to happen immediately. I think it's going to be somewhere in in Act 2, probably. Yeah. Where um, we then learn that this manifestation of Joel is just Ellie's it's just part of her her psyche yeah and we jump back and we see what led to him kind of like cross cutting in the yeah. winter section where Joel we see what Joel's doing and then we see what Ellie's doing yeah okay and, and we'll we'll find out how he how he died okay but that's that's what I'm anticipating happening um and again I trust Naughty Dog to put together a, a coherent well thought out story uh, so is it going to suck <laughs> to have that revelation that Joel's dead? Yes but will it play into the greater story nicely? I'd put my money on it Okay. what about you? what do you think? you know I want to go back to something for a second before I tell you um, I remember when Uncharted 4 was coming out and everybody was speculating Someone's gonna die in the end. Someone that we've come to know and love is gonna die. Guess what? Everybody walked away unscathed from that thing. To the point where I've said Uncharted 4 is a too much of a perfect ending. Yeah. Where everybody's alive. Yeah, you're, and... you're even led to believe that Sam is dead for a big chunk of the game. Sorry if you haven't played Uncharted 4. Yeah, a lot 4. of spoilers. Sorry. Um... You're le- you're led to believe that that character dies, and then as it turns out, he probably didn't. Um, but yeah, go go on. Go, um, go ahead with your point. So, with that in mind, there's like the uh, happy ending person inside of me wants to say, "No, he's alive. He's there. Why would they kill him off?" 
But it almost seems like with all the dark moments in the trailer and just everything that we've come to know, it does seem like... Because I don't know if you guys picked this up, but you know when um, he comes and grabs her from behind and she kind of tussles and then she stops because she knows who it is? When she turns around, if you guys go back and look at the clip, that's one scene. And then when you see Joel, it's a completely different scene because of the background. It looks like he's in like a, a house or something. So it almost goes to show you maybe the editing style that they chose was to deliberately make you think, oh, he catches up with her halfway and goes, you think I let you do this on your own? Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, wait a second, two different scenes. I'm not, I don't think so. I'm not buying it. Yeah. So again, I don't want Joel dead because again, we come to love these characters. And going back to your point, if Joel is dead, less incentive to do Last of Us 3. Yeah. Um, and I, I, and that's the other thing is you, you felt I'm, I'm gonna reference. Um, uh, I know it's not so much your bag. I'm gonna reference the most recent Star Wars movie. I'm gonna try not to delve too deeply into spoilers, but let's be real, guys. It's been almost a month. If you're gonna see the movie, you should have seen it by now. Piracy. Um, so the end of the movie, um, ties up pretty nicely. Okay. I I know there's people still saying no it's not, it's not a good movie. I think it's a fine ending to the Star Wars saga. This nine movie thing that they've done since 1977. Is it like done done? This chunk is supposed okay. is supposed to be done. Okay. It's supposed to be done, Lucasfilm. <laughs> um but I I I've I even told a guy at the gas station earlier because he saw he saw my shirt. Oh. He goes, "Oh, nice shirt." And I went, "Oh, yeah, thanks." And he said, "You seen the most recent one?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "What did you think?" I said, "I liked it." He said, "Oh, thank you," because <laughs> um, a lot of people are out there, eh, for lack of a better term, bitching um, about the movie. They're saying too much fan service. I think for what it is, great ending. Yeah. I think it tied everything up that needed to be tied up. Are there a couple of things that I would change? Yes, but that's the nature of these that's things. That's natural. Um, but that's also me speaking as a writer. If yeah. I'd written the movie, I would have made a couple <laughs> of little changes, but otherwise, I can accept yeah. what happened. Yeah. And not everything ended up perfectly. At the very end, um, you have a character standing at a, at a location talking to another character and they turn and they look and they see um, deceased people <laughs> off to the side who are just doing the, the smiling down on them from heaven uh, symbolism. Yeah. And it, it it's just it's a nice little bow. But if those people had survived, it wouldn't have the same uh, gravitas yeah. uh, at the end as I think these things can. Uncharted 4. Everybody made it. Everybody made it. <laughs> So it doesn't have that same impact. Like even uh, with that one, they tie, they tied everything up. Elena and and Nate, they're fine. Yeah. Um. So I think that that's how you put the put put the nail in Last of Us Two, is by not a lot, especially given the tone the tonality of the game. It's never been a happy game. Yeah. The fact that you start with a child getting shot to death by a fucking rifle. Well, they say that's that's what's inferred, but, you know, ideally it's like, we, we know, we can put it together. That's yeah. that's what they're going for. But the fact that that's how you start this this game off, it, it, it fits with the tonality of the whole experience if we don't end on a happy note where everybody's squared away. Um, you got the, the little, uh, lesbian romance between Ellie and Dina, Dina teased in the one trailer. Yep. And I think we, it, it had been rumored for a long time, especially once Le Left Behind Left came behind. out, that Ellie was probably LGBTQ. Not that there's anything wrong with that. L L LGBTQ, yeah. Yeah, those are the four, the four main letters. Um, I know there's other ones, IA, uh, plus sign... Um, T, I think, no, T we already said. Eh, there's a lot of letters now. It was teased ever since then that she, at minimum, was probably a lesbian. Or at, at minimum was bisexual. Yeah. Um, 
because I, I never felt it, but I think that some people kind of interpreted that she might have had a little bit of a thing for Sam. I, it's a, I, I never got a romantic vibe. It was probably more, mostly more, friendly. Or a brother-sister yeah. type of vibe, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, we were anticipating that she would probably end up being a lesbian at this point because they wanted to, they, they were hinting at that. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with that. I almost would, um, I'm almost inclined to say Dina shouldn't even make it out of the game. But, wow. uh, but we'll see. Uh, I, I have not given nearly as much thought to how I would do Last of Us 2 as they have, considering the game count. Should should be coming out should have been coming out in 2 months I february think, right? was it february well it was 22120 is what they initially yeah. went for uh-huh. and then they're like sorry guys there's a part of the game that we want to work on take notes 2k20 um where and, are we want yeah and so they they pushed back to may may and i'm not mad about that i'm i mean i'm i'm sad but i'm not mad because i i again i believe that they're doing what's best for a the story b the characters and c the 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 fans yes um, consequently, if you're listening and you can hook your homie up with the Ellie edition of the game, I've pre-ordered the collector's edition, but I wanted the Ellie edition and they sold out because I didn't realize that they went on sale on November yeah. 26th or whatever the hell day they announced the game. Naughty Dog, we love you, but that announcement of the DLC was kind of like tucked away and hidden. It was like you had to kind of find out about it yourself yeah. and then go and order it. Um, is, is that the one with the vinyl record? Yes. That's okay. the one that I wanted. I was inclined to get that one, but I'm like, I don't really need the backpack. I don't even have a record player, so well, I got I, the collectible. For LA Comic Con, I put together a little LA cosplay. W- which the backpack, the backpack would have... would be great have, for. Yeah. And so I was totally down to spend the 229 yeah. or whatever... To get all, because there's a ton of stuff in there. I I made her bracelet. I'm yeah. not wearing it, but I made a version of her bracelet. But having the actual bracelet, which comes in the one I ordered anyway, the, for the collectible one, you get everything minus the vinyl record and the backpack. Everything Correct. else you get. Yeah. I think there's one other mm, little thing. Like I think you get stickers and a pin in one, and just right, yeah. stickers in the other. Or something. Yeah, but yeah. Either way, if you can hook a homie up with the Ellie edition, um, I will shake your hand and take the game. That's so, it. leave leave a, leave something in the comments uh, showing that you're trustworthy. Um, wow. What? I mean, there's a lot of scammers out there, man. This is true. No, I'm excited. I'm I'm obviously excited for the game. Yes. Um, anytime I play, I'll be putting on putting on my Ellie pants, as I call them. Um, it's a real nice pair of jeans that I like cut up with a knife to match the the cosplay guy yeah. that they had. Um. A lot of people seem to also insinuate that this is going to be a revenge story. That yeah. Ellie is trying to get one back on, you know, for whoever, yeah, whoever murdered um, Dina. I mean, at first, the, when Uncharted 4 came out, there was a, a little poster on in the epilogue where it was what looked like Ellie being pregnant. Yeah, American so, girls. Yeah, so a lot of people seem to go off of, oh, maybe in the second one they kill her unborn baby and then she gets her revenge. Yeah. Now it seems like we've done a complete 180 where it she had a lover and this is, you know, the and result the of lover that. lover itself is dead. Especially with the, the other teaser where you have... Um, our, so let's talk about that real quick. The one where they're, they've they got the, the person lashed up and yeah. somebody comes out with the, the hammer and is... Is that Ellie? Are we to believe that that's Ellie or is that somebody else? People were insinuating that was Ellie's mom. Which I... Th- which she had died by the time the timeline of the first game happening yeah but people seem to continue that this was before the yeah. first game in timeline was actually done but yeah that, i mean you you've got what looks like probably culty people uh lashing people up maiming them hitting them with hammers it's it's not fireflies anymore right it's it's, it's a new group so. this is it's a, a new it's a, a new, new group f- yeah. group of fanatics yeah um <laughs> I perceive them as as like a cult as opposed to like a militia. Um, Basically, if, if if David was yeah, a yeah, yeah. a society, yeah. if you will. I the thing that I am I I now that you now that you've said his name, um, I'm hoping that that's not a core plot to this game. That 
the death of David is sending any of this stuff into spiral. Because mm. I hadn't thought about that until just now. But I, I don't, I don't know that that's what I would want to see play out. Where like. David was the leader of this group. He gets murdered by these two, and then they go after Dina, everybody. and then now it's Ellie trying to get back at them. Yeah, I'm hoping that's not what it is. I mean, I would assume we'll that see. that the fir- that the second game was somehow try to attach itself to the first game, which I think yeah. you were right earlier when you said I think we're gonna see some of that cross cutting. You know. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if we maybe see a few uh, flashbacks here and there, you know, like to the I swear and, you know, and all that. Um, that might even be how the game start. starts. Yeah. Jumping back to that and then it goes dark and then we were ra- like raise up on the party or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, they're so good with cinematics, though. I, I'm super excited. For and them. they don't BS you. If you ever notice, like the trailer, like it's not one. It's not like 2K20 where the trailers... It's it's big, it's spectacle, and then you get the game, and it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> it's like they actually deliver. They yeah. don't BS you, you know. Um, I will say this though. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the demo video for Last of Us One. No. But there were actually a few things that were in the game that they actually took out, which mm-hmm. would have made the game a whole lot better. Like there was a crouch mode where Joel would still run, but he would kind of be crouching. Yeah. Um, and they completely took that out to the point where it's either you're running or you're slowly walking, you know, hunched over. Um, and it, from what we saw from the gameplay trailer, it looks like everything is very well patched up and everything is organized. And you have that little sub menu where you can craft and add addition to your weapons. Um, and we we saw the cool addition of going under cars now and yeah. being able to shoot, which is it's awesome. Yeah. Um, Hopefully that all stick. That's all still in the game. That's all in the out. game. Do not take it out. Because um, <laughs> yeah, it gives you a lot more dynamic way to to engage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else that you want to cover, or anything else that's been on your mind about Last of Us Part Two? No. Uh, mm-hmm. For now, I'm 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 happy. Um, I can't wait for it to I can't wait for it to come out because I already pre-ordered it. And I did as well. The second that it arrives, I'm gonna plug Open. that thing. I'm gonna delete all the other games on my PlayStation to make sure there's room, and then I'm gonna play that that game till I'm done with it. <laughs> I've been noticing something though. I've been noticing a lot of my friends since uh, my my PlayStation friends uh, ever since the gameplay trailer came out a lot of people have been going back and playing the first one as a way of kind of like revisiting the story yeah. setting yourself up until the second one comes out yeah. um i think I'll, I'll probably from now until then i'll play the game maybe either once or twice i'm talking about like fully completing the yeah. game because i like i used to have like this routine this unintentional routine set up where i would play the game like once every three months yeah. and literally beat the game once every three months yeah um, and then that kind of fizzled out, but I'm probably going to do that one or two more times and before the second one comes out, um, just the kind of way of like freshening yourself up and sort of re-engaging, you know, with those characters in the story. But, um, yeah, uh, we discussed a lot and I think that for now, both you and I are square. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us and always remember, save your progress and don't turn off the system. Toodles.